Surah Al-Hadid is the 57th uh, surah in the beautiful Quran uh, and it refers back to the verse in this surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيد right? and we have sent down the hadith uh, of course, the early generation of the scholars, they never really uh, understood what Anzalna al-Hadith meant, but they knew the implications that iron that we use, you know, to, uh, to build the structural materials and all the iron had to be actually sent from outer space. So they assumed that here Anzalna means, uh, you know, we have brought about or we've created Hadith. However, today, modern science shows that actually Hadith was not created on earth and it actually had to come from outer space into the earth. So subhanAllah, and only today do we really understand what Anzalna al-Hadith really means that all the iron that exists on this earth actually came in the form of meteors that crashed into the earth and that now became part of the crust of the outer surface of this earth. Allahu Akbar. Surah al-Hadith, as the scholars of Islam of Tafsir are in agreement, was revealed in Medina. And it was revealed in a time after the Battle of Uhud, before the, before the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So the Surah was revealed. What was the political context at that time? The context was Battle of Badr was won by the Muslims, so all of, of the uh, Quraysh got really angry. They mustered their forces, and they came with Battle of Uhud. In Battle of Uhud, they could not have a decisive victory. So they all uh, raised up all the Arabian tribes across all of Arabia. Come on, let's go and finish off these insolent people, they think they're going to start a new religion. This is the Battle of Ahzab. So all of Arabia was united against Rasulullah So can you imagine in this context, the surah came down. What do you think is required from the Muslimin in this, in this situation? This surah came down to encourage the believers to donate. Now is the time to help the ummah with all that you have. Give everything that you have because the ummah needs it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to sell yourself and give your wealth to Allah so that he will give you back this loan on that day compounded with amazing interest which will be for you forever in Jannah bi This is Surah Al-Hadid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah ar-Rahman, meaning the one who is generally merciful to all creation, ar-Rahim, the one who is specifically merciful to believers. Sabbaha lillahi, meaning every single thing praises Allah. Ma fi samawat, everything in the heavens, wal ard, and everything on this earth. Wa huwa al aziz al hakim, and he is al aziz, the one who is most honored. Al hakim, the one who is most wise. Lahu mulku samawati wal ard. To him are the dominions, the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Yuhi wa yumit, he gives life to whoever he wills. Wa yumit, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Wa huwa, and he is ala upon kulli shayin, every single thing qadir able to uh, disperse of the affairs as he wishes. Now look at the names Allah, Allah says, four names Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, four names, what are they? So he is al-awwal, the first one, meaning the time itself is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists without time, so he is the first and the last, meaning he is there all the time. It was never a, a period of time when Allah did not exist. He was always there, al akhir and he is the last. And so the, the, the hadith mentioned that Allah will, Allah will destroy all of creation on the day of judgment, everything, including Israfil, including Jibra'il, including the Hur al-Ain, including Jannah, everything will be destroyed. Only Allah will remain. Then Allah will say, where are the kings today, I am the king on a day in which there is no other kings other than I. Well, Zahir, what does Zahir mean? And the authentic hadith of Rasulullah he explained what Zahir means. Oh Allah, you are the one who is above everything, so there is nothing above you. And then al Batin, he is the one who knows the internal details of everything, infinite knowledge about everything, including the impossible, how it would be if it was possible. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And he is all aware of full knowledge about every single thing. 
هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days then he rose up above the throne in a manner befitting his majesty يعلم ما يلج في الأرض He knows that which crawls into the earth وما يخرج منها and he knows what comes out of the earth وَمَا يَنزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ And what comes down from the sky. وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا And that which goes up to the sky. So what goes into the earth are insects and worms. What comes out of it are also insects and worms and also of course plants when they sprout out. What comes down from the sky are the angels. What goes up to the sky are the angels as well as shayateen when they try to go up to the heavens and they are then stopped from coming up to the heavens. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ And He is with you wherever you are. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ And He is always looking at whatever you are aware of. This verse is very important. Because this verse shows us that when Allah says He is with us, doesn't mean Allah is physically with us. No, we say God is everywhere with His knowledge. But also by way of help and by way of and support for His awliya. And with the believers, He is with us by way of help. لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ For him is the kingdom and dominion of the heavens and the earth. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns back all affairs. Again, all of this to build up this, this image of Allah in our minds that Allah is the king, the greatest of the great. He has no need of his creation lest that anyone who starts reading the, the next verses that are coming up starts thinking that this God doesn't have wealth, that this God needs money. To him is the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and to Allah returns back all affairs. Not only does he uh, have the dominions of everything, he also controls time. He folds up the layl, the night, into the nahar, into the day. And he folds up the day into the night. And he is most aware of what you conceal in your hearts. Now he tells us what he wants us to do. So he says, Aminu billahi wa rasuli. Believe in Allah and in his messenger. Though he doesn't need you, he is ordering you. What is his order? Believe in Allah and his messenger. Wa anfiqu and give money. And give wealth. Mimma from that which Ja'alakum he has made you. Mustakhlafina fi, he has made you the possessors of, meaning give wealth from the wealth which Allah has given you. Falladina amanu minkum, so whoever gives wealth from you, wa anfaku lahum ajrun kabir, and gives wealth for him is a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First believe and then donate. Wa ma lakum la tu'minuna billahi, what is wrong with you that you do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa rasul and the messenger. Yad'ukum is calling you لِتُؤْمِنُوا that you should believe بِرَبِّكُمْ that you should believe in your Lord وَقَدْ أَخَذَ مِيثَاقَكُمْ and he has taken your promise إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ if indeed you're believers. What is the purpose of saying this? Why don't you believe after talking about donate in the cause of Allah? Uh, the reason is that when we don't give in the cause of Allah we actually are disbelieving in some way or the other. Why? Because we are either disbelieving Allah's promise or we are disbelieving that Allah actually owns this money that we own. We actually think, no, we own it, not Allah owns it. Or that we are afraid of poverty, thinking that if we give this money, the money will not be with us. So we'll become poor and we'll become hungry. But you're forgetting it is Allah who provides you. Allah is a provider, not your wealth and your money. So why are you afraid? My brothers and sisters Islam, we want to see a generation that gives in the cause of Allah without being afraid of anyone. So when Allah says, what is wrong with you that you don't believe? Meaning what is wrong with you that you withhold your money? He is the one who sends upon his slaves, Rasulullah bayinat, manifest signs, in order to take you all out, from misguidance to guidance, wa inna Allah Bikum la ra'ufur rahim, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you most ra'uf, most kind, rahim, most merciful with the believers. 
if Allah is merciful with us, why are we not merciful back to our brothers and sisters who need money from us? That is what is being meant by this. Inna Allah bin Nasi la Raufur Rahim. Verily, He is with us. Bikum la Raufur Rahim. He is most merciful, most most uh, uh, kind. Wama alakum la tunfiquna fi sabila. And what is wrong with you that you do not do infaq, meaning give give sadaka in 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 the cause of Allah, fi sabila for Allah's sake. Walillahi mirafu samawati wal ard. And to Allah belongs the earth, meaning the inheritance of the heavens and the earth. Meaning to Allah belongs the dominions of the heavens and the earth. What is wrong with you or people that you're not giving in the cause of Allah? In the authentic hadith in Bukhari, Muslim. Wow, unbelievable hadith. Hadith is Rasulullah saying, Allah said, so it's a hadith Qudsi. Oh mankind and oh jinn, if the first of you, if the last of you, all of you got together in one place and then you asked Allah for anything and everything you want, this would not take away from the kingdom of Allah except as much as a pin that is dropped into an ocean. How much, does, how much water does it take out? Yes, salam. So why are we so afraid? Why are we afraid of poverty? La yastawi. The two are not equal. Minkum. Meaning from you all, O people, the two of you are not equal. Which two? Man anfaqa min qablil fathi. The one who gives charity before victory, meaning the one who gives charity when Islam is weak, when the Muslims need money, when the Ummah is weak, those, those two are not equal. The one who gives money or donates before victory. وَقَاتَلْ And struggles and fights in the cause of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةً They, those who do this, meaning struggle with, to strive with their body and with their wealth in the cause of Allah before the signs of victory are apparent. Those are a'adhamu darajatan. They are higher status in the eyes of Allah. Min al-ladina anfaku. From those who give in sadaqa, min ba'du, after victory. Wa qatalu, and then struggle and fight after victory. Wa kullan, and both the people. Wa adallahu al-husna. Allah has promised good. Both when the ummah needs your help or doesn't need your help, right? Both Allah has promised you good. But those who do it when the Ummah is in need, before the signs of victory are apparent, then they are higher in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is most aware of what you do. Man Now look what Allah says about this donation. Do not think this is a donation, it's an investment. It is a loan. Man Who is there that will give Allah? Yuquridu, meaning who will give a loan to Allah. Ya akhwati, this verse puts shame in my heart. My Lord is asking for a loan. Don't you feel shame in your heart a little bit? A bit of sympathy for the person. Who, will gonna, who is going to give Allah a good loan? Qard al-Hasana is when you give a loan and you don't ask for anything back. Because Allah is going to give you back in a way you will blow your mind away. For you da'ifuhu. And he will multiply it for you, lahu, for you. Walahu ajrun kareem. And for him, on top of this, will be a noble, noble reward. What is the noble thing Allah will give us? He'll give us Jannah and a place for us, for us to see Allah Azza wa Jal and safety from Jahannam. Yawma taral mu'minina wal mu'minat. On that day, you will see the believing men and the believing women. Yas'a nuruhum bayna aydihim. Their light will spread in front of them. What is the light? The light that is inside our hearts, brothers and sisters, that unfortunately gets covered by sin. But if you polish your heart with repentance, with tawbah, with istighfar, and with dhikr of Allah Azawajal, then the light comes out. On the day of judgment, this nur will actually shine forth in a big way. Yes, nuruhum, the light will shine forth. Bayna aidihim in front of them. Wabi Aiman him and to their rights. So light everywhere. Bushra kumul yom. Glad tidings are for you today. Jannatun tajri min tahtihal anhar. Gardens is your home. The gardens of Jannah will be your home. Tajri, meaning flowing underneath your homes, are rivers. Khalidina fiha. They will abide therein forever. Eternal life. Never will it finish. That is al fawz meaning the success al azim the great success the supreme success 
يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ Now Allah talks about the munafiqeen. The believers, light is shining forth in front of them and they've crossed their sirat very quickly. From that day when the munafiqeen, the hypocrite men and the, and the hypocrite women, the scholars of tafsir say, when Allah separates the men and women, this is to emphasize how true this will be. And this is to emphasize this will happen to each and every one of them. لِلَّذِينَ amanu will scream out to those people who believe. Unduru, hey, wait. Meaning, don't go on this sirat running away. Unduru, naqtabis. Meaning, let us benefit from min nurikum from your light. Meaning, what is the sirat? The Prophet ﷺ said the sirat is sharper than a sword, thinner than a hair, and it's over Jahannam. What color is Jahannam? Black. It's practically invisible. Would you agree? So, how could you see the sirat only with your light? And so these munafiqeen have no light. What was the nifaq? The nifaq from the nifaq was that they were stingy. They never gave in the cause of Allah. Naqtamis min nurikum. The believers will say to the munafiqeen, they will turn back and say, Go back. Wara'akum. Behind you. Faltamisu nura. Go back and find light yourself. We're not going to give you from our light. And they will fall into Jahannam, into the depths of Jahannam. This is why you want more light on the day of judgment. Give more sadaqah in the cause of Allah. قِيلَ ارْجِعُوا وَرَاءَكُمْ فَالْتَمِسُوا نُورًا فَذُورِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورٍ So when this is said to them, around them will be walls of smoke that will come around them. بَاطِنُهُمْ فِيهِ رَحْمَةٍ Inside it they will think there is mercy. وَظَاهِرُهُ Outside it they will know there is nothing but punishment. يُنَادُونَهُمْ أَلَمْ نَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ They will say to the believers, were we not with you? قَالُوا بَلَا Believers will say back to the hypocrites, yes. You were with us. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ But you have done fitna to yourselves. How did you cause fitna to yourselves? By disbelieving and by being hypocrites. وَتَرَبَّسْتُمْ And you delayed answering the command. وَرْتَبْتُمْ And you had doubts. Ya khwani, this is so important. If you delay, you know, this is a sign of hypocrisy. So when Allah says donate, you say, no, no, later, later, Allah will do it later. One of the signs of hypocrisy also is to have doubts. But doubts, I mean, sometimes some shaitan might whisper things in our ears. Real doubt is when you actually act upon the doubt and you actually speak it to others or you start believing it yourself. This is called real doubt. Yeah. kumul amani. Your hopes deceived you. Oh, this is the problem. We are hopeful. Allah ghafur rahim. Don't worry, guys. We'll be all right. Allah forgive. Allah mercy. Ikhwani don't have false hopes. No one has false hopes except the disbelievers. The believers, they are afraid that they might be hypocrites. Hatta ja'a amrullah until the command of Allah came, meaning the punishment of Allah came or death came. Wa gharrakum billahi al-gharur and you were deceived about Allah, a total deceiving. Meaning you thought Allah loved you, but Allah actually hated you. Meaning you thought Allah was going to give you Jannah, but Allah gave you Jahannam. But now the truth has come out, you have no light at all. فَالْيَوْمَ لَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْكُمْ فِدِيَةً So today, today, O oh disbelievers who didn't listen to my command, and O oh hypocrites who didn't listen and did not donate. No ransom, you cannot ransom yourself from Jahannam. No escape, no fidya. وَلَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Nor from those people who disbelieved. مَأْوَاكُمُ nar, Your home will eternally be Jahannam. هِيَ مَوْلَاكُمْ The Jahannam is your abode and your residence. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And what an evil destination is Jahannam. أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Has the time not come for those who believe? أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ That their hearts should tremble with the fear of Allah. لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ For the remembrance of Allah. وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ And that which has come down from the truth. Meaning, has the time not come for those who say that they believe in Allah? For their hearts to tremble when Allah is mentioned. The scholars of Islam say, when Allah has given you blessings and ni'mah, the last thing you should have is hope. The first thing you should have, have is fear of Allah. When Allah has given you disease and turmoil and punishment, First thing you should have, you should have is hope. But when you have blessings and ni'mah and health and youth, the first thing you should have is fear of Allah Azza Because it could be a deception to take away from the real path. Yes? So Ikhwani, has the time not come? For those who believe in Allah, for their hearts to tremble when Allah is mentioned. And 
when they read the truth from the Quran, meaning when they recite the Quran, why is it that the hearts don't tremble? Wala yakunu, the believer should never be like those people. Wala yakunu kalladina, like those. Utul kitaba bin qablu, who were given the book before us, like the Jews and the Christians, 124,000 books. Each prophet was given a book. Fatala alihimul amad, so a huge amount of time passed. Waqasat kulubuhum. And their hearts became hard before they actually read the book. And this is the problem today, Ikhwani. Why are we so far away from Islam? Because this Quran is just something which is for decoration. How many copies of the Quran in our house that have dust on it? This is the problem. Our hearts have become hard. We have forgotten Allah. We don't fear Him because we don't read the Quran. So do not be like those people who are given the book before, but a long duration of time passed before they read the book and before they pondered on it. وَقَصَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And a lot of them became from the evil people, the fasiqeen, those who do fisk, which is sins and filthy deeds. اعلموا And know, O people, أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُحْيِي الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا That Allah gives life to the earth after its death. Meaning that He will also give you life after death too. قَدْ بَيَّنَّا لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ We have made the signs manifest for you. Perhaps that you may understand. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْمُصَّدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَّدِّقَاتِ Verily those who donate, the donating male and the donating female. وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا And they give to Allah a beautiful loan. يُضَاعِفُهُ لَهُ لَهُ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ Allah will multiply their loans, multiply the investment for them, and for them will be an amazing reward. Can you see, Ikhwani, how this surah is all about giving sadaqah? The ulama, they said, love of this dunya and love of the akhirah are like two scales in the heart of a believer. When one is heavy, the other one is light. When one is light, the other one is heavy. If you love the dunya more, you will hate giving sadaqah because you want to keep it with you. If you love the akhirah more, you don't care about the dunya, give it away, who cares? Allah will look after me. Ask yourself how much you love the dunya versus the akhirah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصِّدِّقُونَ And those who آمَنُوا believes بِاللَّهِ in, an, in Allah وَرُسُلِهِ and his messengers أُولَٰئِكَ They are the صِدِّقُونَ They are those who are the ones who are truthful. So therefore here Allah says, whoever believes in Allah and His messengers, despite His people disbelieving in Him, they are the Siddiqoon, means those people who know the truth and then believe in the truth. Who are the true Siddiqoon? The scholars of Tafsir said, Siddiqoon are ulama, because they know the truth and then they attest to the truthfulness of this truth, they have the knowledge and then they believe. Washuhada, the martyrs, عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ عِنْدَ مِنْ with رَبِّهِمْ with their Lord. Lahum for them, ajruhum will be their reward, wa nuruhum and their light, meaning the light by which they will be able to cross on the sirat on the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the siddiqun before the shuhada, which shows that ulama and those who have knowledge and then believe in that knowledge are better than the martyrs. Whoever thinks that ulama are not better than martyrs, he has a problem with his Islam. Walladina kafaru and those who disbelieve. وَكَذَّبُوا and lie against me بِآيَاتِنَا with my signs أُولَٰئِكَ they are the أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ they are the dwellers of Jahannam don't be like the previous generation be like those who are Siddiqeen and Shuhada so that we may attain the righteousness in this dunya and the akhirah now look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about regarding this dunya what a powerful verse this verse is verse number 20 in Surah Surah Al-Hadid اِعْلَمُوا know this O human beings أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا أَنَّمَا That is the hayat, which is the life of this, this dunya, is la'ib, is only gains. Our dunya, our life is just a game. وَلَهُ is fleeting pleasures, it's a waste of time. وَزِينَ meaning a distraction. So something that is attractive, but is distracting you from something more important. وَتَفَاخُرٌ and mutual boasting. How many kids do you have? I have three. Oh, me? I have six. I'm wealthier than you. I'm more blessed than you. Where we compete. وَتَكَاثُرُونَ And competition for more wealth. فِي الْأَمْوَالِ 
Then he says, well, awlad and children. Why competition for more wealth? Because you can see today, fathers, they prefer wealth before their children sometimes. That's why the kids are growing up without their fathers. Brothers and sisters, why are we wasting our life in games and waste of time and mutual boasting? Why? When this dunya is going to just finish very quickly. Look at the example Allah gives right after. Like the example of a light rain. kuffar. So the rain that falls, that pleases the kuffar. Which kuffar are these guys? Our farmers. Why were they called kuffar? Because they hid the, the seed under the, under the soil. So the same word was used by Islam to mean kuffar, those who hide the truth of Allah with their falsehood. So here Allah is talking about the original kuffar, which is the farmers. A'ajab al-kuffar, that surprises and amazes the kuffar, meaning rain falls, they've just planted, imagine you've just planted something, rain falls, you know, the, the crops are gonna grow. I'm gonna be so rich. Look how much fruits and, and, uh, and, and plantation harvest I'm going to have. Thumma yahiju, but before it can, produce any fruits, yahij. Yahij means it dries up. No more rain, gone. You are 40 years old. Now you don't feel any pleasure anymore. 60 years old, 70 years old, the heart gives away. First stroke happens. Cancer is found out. You can't even urinate properly. You can't sit properly because of back pain. You can't even lift anything. You're forgetting things. You're tired more. You can't enjoy your food anymore. You've got a massive prescription of pills the doctor's given you. Yahiju, thumma yahiju, pleasure's gone. So it becomes dried up. Fatarahu musfarra, until it becomes yellow. Thumma yakunu hutama, until it becomes straw. It's lifeless, yellowish, dry crops that it will just fall down and die. This is how this dunya is. So we cannot be fooled by this dunya. Do not be of those people who think that he is going to get richer, 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 whereas time is getting lesser and lesser and lesser. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ Meaning, protect yourselves from the fire with sadaqah. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَضْوَانٌ And a forgiveness from Allah, وَرَضْوَانٌ and His happiness. How can you attain His happiness? With sadaqah. In the authentic hadith, Rasulullah wasallam said, Verily, sadaqah extinguishes Allah's anger, just like water extinguishes fire. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And the life of this dunya is nothing but mata' meaning a provision, ghurur, a fleeting provision or a deceptive provision. You think there's pleasure there, there's forgiveness, there's mercy, there's happiness there. You go and you strive more for this dunya and what do you get? You end up getting nothing else but musibah. Sabiqu, Allah says, compete with one another. إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ For the forgiveness of your Lord. وَجَنَّاتٍ And the gardens عَرْضُهَا The expanse of the gardens عَرْضُ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Like the expanse of the heavens and the earth Meaning Jannah is so big It is like the expanse of the heavens and the earth أُعِدَّتْ Prepared لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ Prepared for those who believe in Allah and His messengers My brothers and sisters in Islam This is the problem today We think Jannah is one Jannah No, Jannah is levels each Jannah better than the other Jannah, compete with each other for more, compete with each other for good deeds. It's a competition, competition for more Jannah. That is the blessings of Allah. Yu'tihi man yasha, that He gives to whoever He wills. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim, and Allah is the giver of all blessings. In the authentic hadith in, in Sahih Muslim, it is reported that the last person who will enter Jannah, when he comes crawling out of Jahannam, then the angels will fix him, will clean him, will clothe him, and then Allah will say, oh so and so, now that I've forg forgiven you, what shall I give you? And so the man will say, oh Allah, would you let me enter Jannah and give me what I had in this dunya? He said, for you is what you had in this dunya and 10 times like it. So the man will smile. Really? 10 times like it? And then when he says that, he said, and for you is even more 10 times like it, meaning a hundred times of what is in this dunya. So the man will look up to Allah and he'll say, oh Allah, are you mocking me? Are you making fun of me? <laughs> and the Prophet ﷺ said that Rasulullah when he said this, he laughed and he smiled until his teeth could show. Meaning the man couldn't believe Allah's blessings 
But this is for the last person who enters Jannah. Whatever evil hurts you or touches you, fill ardi in this earth. Wala fi anfusikum or in or in yourselves. Illa fi kitab is already in a book. Min qabli an nabraaha before we bring it to light. In which book? Loh al mahfuz. Meaning, whatever evil strikes you in this dunya, it's already written. So do not be sad about it. Rather be of those people who ask Allah for strength. Min qabli an nabraaha. Inna dalik ala Allahi yasir. That is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa taala. Likay la taasau. Look at this verse. This is an amazing verse where Allah tells us that whatever poverty strikes is already in a book. It's not because of you giving more money. If you become wealthy, it's already written. So what are you afraid of? If Allah has written it for you, you should be happy for yourself. So never ever be sad about that which did not come to you. Meaning, you're looking in the past, oh, how I wish I got wealthy before. Oh, I wish I made so much money. Don't look at the past. Don't regret about the past. Wala tafrahu, nor do you become excessively happy by that which has come to you. Because do not think that what has come to you is because of your own goodness. Rather, it is something which has already been written. And that thing that has come to you may one day also go away from you because it may be already written that it goes away from you. So do not be excessively happy when good comes to you or be excessively sad when evil or fitna strikes you. وَلَا تَفْرَهُ بِمَا آتَاكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like in every arrogant boaster. أَلَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ Those who are stingy. وَيَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبُخُلْ And they order people to be stingy. Meaning don't give all your wealth away. Don't give so much in sadaqah. Man, give later. Ikhwani, this is haram. This is wrong. Do not encourage each other to be stingy. Stingy in the cause of Allah, this is something which is very, very disliked. وَمَن يَتَوَلَّا فَإِنَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ And whoever turns away from my remembrance and my order, what I'm telling you in this Qur'an, then know this, Allah is ghani, Allah is rich, free of all wants, Allah is the all praiseworthy, all rich. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا We have sent our messengers بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ With the clarifications, which is the Qur'an and the Sunnah. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And we gave them or we sent down to them Al-Kitab, the book, the Qur'an and the books before, the Torah and Zabur and others. وَالْمِيزَان And the حُكُمْ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسَ بِالْقِسْطِ In order to judge between people in truth. So here Allah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent His messengers to be of those people who are supreme over others and rule over others. وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ That's why he also sent down iron, meaning from the stars. And we know that iron was never produced on this earth because the earth, the temperatures were never hot enough to produce iron from hydrogen. وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ And we have sent down the iron. فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ With it is a very strong strength. وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ And a benefit for mankind. وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ And so that Allah may know who helps him from those who do not help him. وَرُسُلَهُ بِالْغَيْبِ who, Those who help his, uh, who helps Allah and helps his messengers in secret. إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strong, free of all wants. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of the past generations and how they became misguided. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا وَإِبْرَاهِيمٌ And we had indeed sent Nuh and Ibrahim. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا And we made in their offsprings an meaning prophethood, wal kitab, and the books we sent down to them as well. However, some of them were believers. Famin hum muhtadin. Some of them truly followed the, the messengers and became true believers. Wa kathirum min hum fasiqun. But the vast majority were fasiqin, were sinners. Meaning, brothers and sisters, let's not become like them. We are the inheritors of the sunnah and of the seerah and of the knowledge of Rasulullah. Let us not become like the generation of the past who only some of them were guided but the majority were misguided. Let us be majority guided, only minority misguided. Then thereafter we followed them, meaning thereafter we followed their athar, meaning their lineage. Meaning with, with our messengers. 
and we followed them up with Isa ibn Maryam from the same lineage. وَآتَيْنَاهُ Injil, And we gave him the Injil, which is the book. So can you see how Allah is re referring to the people of the past? Why is he doing that? Because he's saying the people of the past were given the book. They were sent the messengers, but they did not read the book and they did not give charity and they were never ever working for the Akhirah. Vast majority of them only lived for this dunya only. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ رَأْفَةً وَرَحْمَةً And we made some of those who followed him, meaning followed Nabiina Isa alayhi salatu salam, رَأْفَةً compassion وَرَحْمَةً and mercy. Meaning that many of them were actually very generous and kind and merciful to their fellow beings. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not blame all Christians. He says some of them definitely were actually good people. However, they did something wrong which is they misunderstood when Allah Azrael says to donate and give away this dunya, they understood it to mean that they shouldn't even earn anything. They should completely shun the world. They misunderstood what Allah meant. He told them to shun love of the world. This is what they did. They invented monasticism. We did not ordain monasticism on them. We did not ask them to become monks. Those who, sorry, don't earn any money and they don't get married and they shun the whole world. They have invented. We have not ordained this upon them. They have done this seeking the love of Allah. This is important. The monks, when they became monks, they did this seeking Allah's love. And that is why Allah says that bid'ah, when it is done, it is not done in order to anger Allah. It is done to please Allah. But that still doesn't make it allowed. They did not do what they were meant to do regarding this topic of monasticism. What, is, what were they meant to do? They meant to not become monks. They meant to get married and they meant to do business. And then give their wealth away in the cause of Allah and not let their wives and their children take them away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَآتَيْنَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ So we gave those who believed amongst them their reward. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And how many of them are sinful transgressors. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now, finally, in the last two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers of the previous generations, the Jews and Christians, as well as the Muslimin, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only in the prophets of the past, but also in this messenger who was sent to you and to help him and to aid him. So listen to what Allah says. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu or you who believe. Ittaqullaha, fear Allah. Wa aminu bi rasulihi and believe in his messenger. Yu'tikum kiflaini min rahmatih. He will give you two portions of his mercy. What do you mean by two portions? So some scholars said this means mercy in this dunya Mercy in the hereafter, meaning he'll give you a good life in this dunya, he'll keep you safe, and he'll keep you upon Islam, and he'll give you contentment, and he'll give you safety and jannah in the hereafter. Other scholars said he'll give you two, two jannas. And he'll give you light. Light meaning knowledge, guidance. Upon which you can be guided in this world. And he will forgive you. Wallahu ghafoor rahim And Allah is of forgiving most merciful. So help Rasulullah How can you help him? By believing in him, helping him with your body and physical struggle and with your wealth. Brothers and sisters, we must give our wealth away in the cause of Allah Poverty is our problem. Children on the roads, sisters being hurt, our problem. Our kids becoming astray, drinking alcohol, doing filthy things, our problem. It's not just a government problem. It's our problem. We need to revive the spirit of volunteerism and giving in ourselves. kitab, So that the people of the book do not ever think that they cannot get anything from the blessings of Allah. Meaning, they let not the Ahlul Kitab ever lose hope that they can get the Fadl blessings of Allah as long as they believe in this messenger that has come, Muhammad Wasallam. وَأَنَّ الْفَضْلَ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ And know that all fadl, all blessings, all good is in the hands of Allah. يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاء He will give to whoever He wills. وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is the giver of all goodness. Jazakumullah khair wa akhiru da'wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa